Okay, so real quick, before we fight Materia Keeper, I want to talk about the Power Soul. Power Soul is a super important weapon. It says power up when uh, when near death. Uh, I should actually I should look it up just so I don't get it wrong. Because the Power Soul and the God God's Hand are slightly different. So the uh, Power Soul has uh, double AP growth, four slots, and if she's in critically low HP, which is like yellow, yellow HP, the damage doubles, and if she's under death sentence, the damage quadruples. And this stacks, meaning that she gets eight times damage if she's almost dead and in death sentence. Which, almost dead can be kind of hard to manipulate. If you kill her and then use a phoenix down on her, you can get it automatically. Um, but death sentence is super easy to manipulate, you just cast death sentence on her. So that's why getting death sentence in the Gee Cave can actually be really useful. Uh, the God's Hand you get later. And the God's Hand has 255% accuracy. So, uh... Oh wait, is that all? Wait, am I getting that mixed with something else? What's the one... What's the other one that, uh... Thinking of the wrong thing. God's Hand is the one that has the max hit. Is Master Fist the one I'm thinking of? I think it is. God's Hand is just really strong because it has 255%. And is also the second strongest weapon. Master Fist is what I'm thinking of. Okay, so Master Fist. Uh, gives her double damage if she's near death, poison, sadness, silence, slow, or darkness. And then Death Sentence and Slow Numb gives her triple. So you can stack all these abilities. You can give her like silence, sadness, poison, almost dead, slow, darkness. Although darkness could be yikes because then it's hard to hit. Uh, and also give her death sentence. I don't think death sentence and slow numb can be combined. I don't remember. But uh, with all of those, you can get up to some ridiculous multiply powers. Um... And yeah, that's one of the biggest ways that the speedrun is done for the longest time. Uh, the no slots category, a lot of the game is stacking a bunch of ailments on Tifa and using those multipliers to just do insane amounts of damage. Uh, you can do all sorts of silly stuff like get times 11 damage with all those ailments and then use like 4x cut. Or you can use added cut. You can use death blow added cut to get like a cheap 2x cut. Um, and just do like stupid amounts of damage. So that's what the speedrun does because it's really easy to get a lot of damage without having to grind. So figured I'd throw that out there. We're not going to be using it. but uh, Okay, so I wanted to try some funny business. Oh yeah, and you can cast Berserk on her, which doesn't give her a multiply bonus for the Power Soul, but gives her a multiply bonus just because Berserk gives you a multiply bonus. So this is Materia Keeper, he's kind of a jerk. Uh, his code is really wonky. He has a chance to use Trine the second the fight begins, and then later he has chances to Trine when he's lower HP. He also has a chance to heal himself when he's lower HP. This is yet another boss where you can skip all of that if you poison him and then don't attack him. It'll skip that whole cure phase and he'll just sit there and get poisoned and die. Uh, another really fun thing about Materia Keeper that I should explain is he has one of the coolest speedrun strats I've ever seen in any RPG. Uh, basically, in the PC version, you skip to Materia Keeper so fast, the old route, uh, you skip the Materia Keeper so fast that you're not anywhere near the right level to beat him. So instead of uh, beating him normally, 
you give Aerith a very specific amount of damage. You make her do exactly 13 damage. And you poison him. Then you fully heal him. Then you throw two potions and a high potion and deal 13 damage with Aerith. And all of that adds up to exact giving him exactly 7,777 HP. And as you may know, there's a Easter egg in the game called Lucky Sevens, where if your character has exactly 7,777 HP, it causes a Lucky Sevens effect. Their life gets like a rainbow effect. And they do, I believe, 64 hits, all for 7,777 damage. Um, there's also a funny mechanic where if everyone gets Lucky Sevens at the same time, they all attack separately for 7,777, um, adding all their attacks up to 64. Well, enemies can also get Lucky Seven status. It's very, very rare, obviously, and no one really ever sees it in casual play. But you can force enemies to get Lucky 7 status. And uh, it works differently. They don't get the automatic attacks. But if they attack you, it will do 7,777 damage. Uh, but funnily, the way that poison works is uh, kind of complicated. But it takes damage. It kind of like uses your own stats for its damage. And so... For some strange reason, the poison does not do a percentage of your health like it's supposed to. It instead does 7,777 damage. So the speed run, the way it worked, is you would get here, you would do the 13 damage with Aerith, you would throw the potions and the high potions, get them up to 7,777 7, health, and then the poison will tick, and the poison will tick him for 7,777, and he dies. And that's the way we beat them in the speed run, so that we didn't have to level up to beat them because we skipped the huge section of the game and we weren't actually strong enough to beat them. And it's one of the coolest, like, flashiest uh, speed run techs I've seen in an RPG. And when we used to do that route, there was always someone that would be like, "Oh my God, what just happened?" And we would have to explain it like every single time because there was always someone that didn't know about it that like got blown away when they saw it. Uh, let's see. I wanted to try something, but I also want to make sure we get trying. So I guess let's just do some damage. See if we can get him to try. Do you do that strat in no slots? I thought you just killed him with power soul. Unless you're saying something different that I'm not understanding. They do use it in those. I didn't know that. I thought you just power tool. sense. Nice miss. If I see him heal, then I know he's close. Like, I, I know that he's low enough to use Trine. So now I can, as long as I do less than a thousand damage, I'll know that I won't kill him. I can just wait for trying. How dare you! My shield just came off. I think it's gonna count though. Yeah, okay, we're good. <laughs> I thought he was gonna play me and hit me with trying the second my thing went down. Okay, so this is what I wanted to try. I wanted to try what Zulop was talking about earlier it sounds hilarious. So we're going to use a mirror to give us reflect. And 
then Aqua Lung ourselves. What if he trolled me and it doesn't reflect? There you go. <laughs> Triple Aqua Lung. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, I I didn't know it was possible with enemy skills. I had done it before with like fire, because I remember we did that stream that one time. We were trying to do as many fires at once. So we did like Quadra Magic, W Magic, Reflect, All, and like tried to get like 50 casts of fire to go off at once. I remember doing it for that, but I don't think I ever knew that it worked for enemy skills. Oh, and we mined it too. Yeah, that was funny. We <laughs> We did like 70 fire casts to the same enemy. Yo, Advent, thank you for the raid. And Aerobarius, thank you so much for the 18 months. Man. Appreciate it so much. Uh, he had a list that of like reflectable enemy skills. They're not all reflectable. Apparently Pandora's box is, which triple Pandora's box would be super strong. So this is a funny uh, little I don't know if you call it a mistranslation or what, but uh, this says received counter materia. It's actually counter attack materia. There's another materia called counter materia. So it's definitely weird that it says counter. Uh, also, it is very important that I equip this and level it up as much as possible for secrets later. So we're going to keep that on a double growth from now until almost the end of the game. What's the difference? Counter attack does a physical attack. Has a percentage chance to do a physical attack if you get hit. Counter has a chance to do whatever uh, yellow materia is linked to it. Get attack. And then magic counter has a chance to do whatever green materia you have attached to it when you get attacked. Also, I should mention really quick, just as a, a little aside, this screen is extremely important to the wrong warp and why it's possible to beat the game in an hour and a half and do a bunch of goofy stuff. Uh, I won't get into it now, but just a funny aside, the screen you use specifically to trick the game into thinking you're in the flashback when you're not and stuff. Thank you for the 100 bits. Super, appreciate it. So the, this forest here and that forest over there is where Yuffie has a 255 out of 256 chance of appearing if you don't have her yet. Yeah, I feel like it would have made more sense if they called it Command Counter, but instead they call that one Counter, and then the Magic one Magic Counter. The regular one that you don't link with materia just is called counterattack. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure the big one counts too. It's any forest in the uh, rocket town area. It doesn't? Wow, I didn't know that. What's her chance there? Is it zero? Is this not the same area? Let me look. I'm interested. So this is... Nebel. That's rocket launch. Wow, I didn't know that. Holy cow! What? <laughs> oh my god. Zilch with the 50 gifted subs in the chat. What? Oh my 
god! How does that not make a hype train just off that alone? I guess it has to be different people. Someone put in one bit, it'll probably make a hype train. <laughs> Holy cow. Zilch. OMG, they were on our bits. It didn't work, I lied. I have to refund you those 100 bits now. Holy cow. Thank you, Zilch. Wow. He reached his 100 gifted subs, too. Amazing. I will play those uh, later, probably in the outro. Thank you. Wow. Insane. Do you believe in the 28? Uh, is there anything here that's interesting? I don't remember. And I, I think we can do Rocket Town before we gotta leave, so let's do it. I think we'll have just enough time. Oh yeah, Dazers. We don't really need them now, but uh, the enemies in that forest you can steal Dazers from, and Dazers are super important later for stuff. For Ruby Weapon, mostly. What's that? Beep, beep, beep. A rusty old rocket. Wonder what they'd make something that huge for. There's some really great stuff here also. You can get gold armlets, but I just stole a bunch of those. Uh, earrings kind of nice for a magic boost. <laughs> oh, I have to I have to point something out here, both for the meme and for myself. Is that the only time you can buy shotgun? That's interesting. Does it go away when you uh, like in disc two? I'm guessing. Okay, so this is Sid's house, and I always have to point out that Sid just has an AK-47 sitting here. Like, it's... <laughs> it's funny to me for a couple reasons, okay? One, the dude uses a spear. Why not use your, your gun? Secondly, it's just the fact that it's, like, so obviously an AK-47. You know what I mean? Like... You would think it would just be like a gun, like just a stereotypical, like just what you would expect a gun to look like, like just a shotgun or like, you know, what's on this on the wall there, like a hunting rifle, right? But it's so obviously exactly an AK-47, you know what I mean? Like, it's just so weird to me that out of all the things, they just make it specifically, <laughs> specifically an AK-47. Just cracks me up every time. Uh, but what's even funnier that I failed to realize um i always point that out like wow look at that gun that's so violent look at the weapon shop dude look at all these guns like just guns are us man why did i ever why did i never point this out not only are there just racks of guns but he's got a gun on the table like just sitting there on the table and there's one like sitting up there too that you can just grab. Like, what is this guy? This guy, not only does he have guns everywhere, but there are, like, unorganized. Like, unorganized gun shop. What's going on here? This is... <laughs> Even his house is all, like, in disarray. I am I would not buy weapons from this guy. Now, let me buy a weapon from this guy. See, on average. But, yeah, like, would you buy a weapon from this guy if you walked in and there was just guns laying around? Get your, get your store together, man. That is wild. <laughs> Excuse me, one guns. In Rocket Town, don't screw around, man. I'm in here. Arr. 
Pittsburgh. I don't know why every town seems to have someone that can't get out of the bathroom. That's just a running theme. It's always someone sick of the bathroom or looking at himself in the bathroom. Alright, old guy. Don't forget to talk to the old guy. That's shooter number 26. It never got off the ground, though. It just looms there. That's how the town got its name. Shinder number 26. Want to look at the rocket with me? Could you imagine walking up to an old guy and he's like, will you look at this with me? And you say yes. And he's like, thanks. Here, have this legendary Japanese sword of death. I get so impressed every time I look at it. Sorry to get you into this. For me, it's kind of hobby. But out of appreciation, let me give you this. I wish you'd take care of it and use it. <laughs> I wish you'd would. You won't, but I wish you would. So the Yoshiyuki is a really strong weapon for Cloud. Uh, it has more damage than anything else. Of course not. Of course not the Seraph Comb. Who can never beat that? But it uh, has a bunch of damage, and it does more damage if your enemies are downed. I don't remember the multiplier, but I want to say it's three times, actually. I think it's, like, double if one ally is dead and triple if both your allies are dead. So it can get really strong if you use it right. It's a very unique weapon. Yep, I was right. Blind Squirrel does find a nut sometimes. Oh, Materia Shop. Yeah, the Yoshiyuki was actually used in the PC Any% percent speedrun for a little bit because we had to wrong warp back to the beginning of the game and beat Motorball. And it was actually faster to have Cloud with the Yoshiyuki and you would purposely take damage all the way to the boss so your allies would die and then you'd solo him with the Yoshiyuki and counterattack. And if you got lucky and counterattack went off once or twice, the fight would go by like super fast. Uh, I just want Barrier, although honestly, since we did get Big Guard, I don't really need Barrier that much, but... Oh, speaking of which, I forgot to answer that question earlier, I apologize, I got distracted. Um, does Final Attack Exit work? I... don't... No. I want to say yes. I don't actually know. Shinra logo on it. Tiny Bronco. This is cool. Will it fly? Is it alright to just take it? <laughs> uh, may I help you? Bust into my house and steal my stuff? No, we're just looking at it. If you would like to use it, please ask the captain. The captain should be in the rocket. I'm Shara. What are your names? I just realized rocket is capitalized there. It's kind of weird. I'm Cloud. Nanaki, otherwise known as Red 13. I, I never thought of it, but if you name Red 13 Nanaki, which a lot of people do, he would say Nanaki, otherwise known as Nanaki. I'm Yuffie. Hmm, so you're not with the Shinra. I thought the approval for the reopening of the space program came. President Rufus is scheduled to come here. The captain's been so restless all morning. Rufus! Oh god, Cloud! What happened to your face? It it's blank! He looks like a puppet! Any 
interesting hacks for Final Fantasy VII. Uh, there's a ton. There's a huge modding community in this game. And we've been a big part of it. If you go to sector48.org, that's our website. We have a bunch of mods there, including the two that we made. say something and I forget what it was. It'll come to me. Sid, talk to me, Sid. What are you guys doing here? We heard the captain was here. Captain? I'm the captain! My name's Sid. Everyone calls me Captain, though. What do you want? You out of your dang mind? That's my most cherished possession. I can't let you take it. Yeah, it must be news about restarting the space program. The young president, that's what we needed. He still has dreams, too. Wow, not bad for a kid. All right, then I'll explain it to you. You know Shinra developed a lot of technological gadgets during this meaningless war, right? Or the meaningless war. Now, it's a Mako company, but in the old days, it was a weapons manufacturer. Well, they came up with a rocket engine. There was so much excitement about the... I thought excitement was spelled wrong for a second. About the thought of going into outer space. Our dreams got bigger and bigger. They put a major budget into it and made prototype after prototype. Finally, they completed Shinra number 26. They chose the best pilot in Shinra. No, in the world! Me. I mean, come on. <laughs> I love that line. I mean, come on. And finally, we got to the day of the launch. Everything was going well. But because of that stupid Shinra, the launch got messed up. That's why we became... They became so anal. I think they changed that. I don't remember him saying that in the Steam version. And so, Shinra nixed their outer space exploration plans. After they told me how the future was space exploration and got my dang hopes up, dang them! Then it was made, it was all over once they found out Mako Energy was profitable. They didn't even so much as look at space exploration. Money, moolah, dinero! My dream was just a financial number for them! Look at this rusted rocket. I was supposed to be the first man in space with this. Every day, it tilts a little bit more. At this rate, I don't know which will come first, this thing falling down or me getting out of here. My last hope is to talk to the president. By the way, I found out in the scene version you can get soft locked on this ladder. There's a lot of ladders you can get soft locked on. Ladders are not programmed well in this game at all. When you approach a ladder, it makes Cloud's model walk towards the ladder, but still with all of its collision. What they should have done was removed Cloud's collision when he activates a ladder. That's what any normal, sane programmer would do. It's like, okay, the model needs to head towards this direction, so you get rid of the collision so they can always get there no matter what. But they don't do that in this game, so if there's something in between Cloud and the ladder, or Cloud and the elevator, or Cloud or the whatever that he's activating, he gets stuck. <laughs> Keywords, normal, insane. You get to replace Sephiroth with a different Final Fantasy villain to mess up the storyline. Who would it be? Wait, it has to be a Final Fantasy villain? That makes it less cool. Because I think most Final Fantasy villains would at least somewhat fit. I was thinking, like, Turbo from Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Do a 
imagine the discussions. Carl Boss, let's go. The whole game you're just hunting down Carl Boss. What's my least favorite color? I'll be honest with you, that's that's a very strange question. Is it rude to say purple? Cause like my bro Cloud's been wearing purple the whole game. Excuse me, Cloud. <laughs> that is so rude. I just don't like. I've never, never been too uh, too excited about purple. I can't think of a single time where I was like, that purple looks nice. Did the captain say anything? Nope. Oh, purple is my favorite color! See, there's no right answer. Someone was going to be mad no matter what I said. Shara, what are you, blind? We got guests. Get some tea. I'm sorry. Really, don't mind us. Shut up, sit your butt down in that chair and drink your god dang tea. I'm so ticked. Shara, I'll be in the backyard tuning up the tiny Bronco. And make sure to serve them some tea, alright? Who does he think he is? Sorry, it's our fault. No, no, he's always like this. What's his prob? I'm gonna go clean that guy's clock. No, it's because of my stupid mistake. I was the one who destroyed his dream. What happened? Hey, get your butt in gear. You work like a snail. Even the moon get tired waiting around for your butt. Uh, I'm sorry. Don't take so much time checking that oxygen tank. Shara, being careful is good, but it won't do any good no matter how many times you check that oxygen tank. That thing wouldn't break even if heck broke over. But... No butts. You're not stupid, so be more efficient. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right, Shara. He was only mean after you ruined his dream. This is proof of that. Think of the 411, Bryce. Appreciate it, my man. What do you think of brown? Do you dislike purple more than brown? Well, I do live in Ohio. So yeah, brown is the worst color. Captain, our dreams are finally coming true. We are so proud to be a part of the launch of Shinra number 26. Captain, preparations are complete. All that's left is liftoff. Yeah, leave it all to me. I'll be back in a few. Alright, Captain. Fly our dreams into outer space. Sid looks really tall here. Thanks, guys. We're praying for your safety. Instrument panel all clear. Shinra number 26 ready for launch. Engine pressure rising. Shinra number 26. Three minutes to launch. Beginning countdown. Finally. What the? What happened? Sid, we have an emergency situation. The mechanic is still in the engine section of the rocket. What? Who is the little jerk? I don't know. Activating the intercom in the engine section. Hey, god dang it. Who the heck's still in there? It's Shara, Captain. Don't mind me. Go ahead with the launch. Shara, what are you still doing in there? I was still concerned. The results of the oxygen tank test weren't satisfactory. <laughs> you stupid little... It's gonna get so hot in there that there ain't gonna be crap left when we blast off. You're gonna be burnt to a crisp. You're gonna die. You know that, don't you? I don't mind. If I can just fix this, the launch will be a success. I'm almost done. Almost done? You're gonna die! Sid, we must start the countdown. We won't make it if we don't. Starting engine. Hey, wait a minute. Shara's still in there. He says in here. I guess it makes sense, though, because they're in the rocket. 
What are you going to do, Sid? If we cancel now, it'll be another six months until the next launch. Ah, dang it, Shara. You want to make me a murderer? Captain! Shara? Tank number seven check is complete. Once a complete tank number eight, it's all clear. Come on, Shara. Hurry up. You're gonna die. 30 seconds still ignition. Beginning countdown. Sid, forget about her. We won't make it in time. Wow, that guy's a murderer. <laughs> what? What am I? What am I supposed to do? Fifteen seconds still ignition. Internal temperature rising. Oh man, the moon, outer space, my dreams. Ignite engine. She. I love that. Now, a lot of people have said many times that, like, this is ridiculous that this would happen. I mean, it is a magical game full of magic, but I do kind of agree. Like, how in the world would a rocket slightly take off, land perfectly, and then tilt? There's no way the whole thing would just explode. <laughs> hey, see you, Mike. Have a great weekend, man. Catch you next week. You pushed the emergency engine shutdown switch, aborting the mission to save my life. Also, what I've always wondered, how did Shara not die anyways? Because it took off, you know? Like, the fire, I mean, the fire was burning. How'd that even save her? After that, the space program was cut back and the launch was canceled. It's my fault his dream was destroyed. That's why it's alright. I don't care what the captain says. I'll live my life for him. Shara is pretty great. Shara, you still haven't served him tea! I'm sorry. Hurry up and sit down. Or ain't, the, or ain't my hospitality good enough for you? They're late. Where's Rufus? Hey, hey, long time no see. So, Sid, how you been? Well, if it ain't Batman Palmer, how long were you figuring on keeping me waiting? Does Palmer just not see us here, by the way? So, when's the space program going to start up again? Hey, hey, I don't know. The president's outside, so why don't you ask him? Good for nothing, fat. Don't say fat. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Hey, hey, tea! Can I have some, too, with lots of sugar and honey and, oh yeah, don't forget the lard. <laughs> it's just oblivious. What the? You got me all excited for nothing? Then what'd you come here for? I want to borrow the tiny Bronco. We're going after Sephiroth, but seems like we've been going in the wrong direction. But now, we think we know where he's headed. But we have to cross the ocean. That's why we want your plane. First the airship, then the rocket, and now the tiny Bronco. Why can't they use the airship again? Is it not? It's finished at this point. I'm actually kind of curious. I don't remember if there's a reason. Shinra took outer space away from me, and now you want to take the sky away from me too? Oh my... You seem to forget it was because of Shinra Inc. that you were able to fly in the first place. What? Uh, excuse me. This way. You wanted to use the tiny Bronco, right? I believe Palmer's going to take it. Why don't you talk to him? I believe he's just stealing it. You want to, like, go stop him? Hmm, why do I have to do this? I'm the head of the space program. We'll be taking that tiny Bronco. I've seen you somewhere before. I know the Shinra building where the president was killed. S security! So a few things about Palmer. He's kind of a joke boss. He's not very difficult. He does do pretty good damage, but the problem with him is that he only does the one attack and it's only single target. So as long as you heal whoever gets hit, you can never really lose. 
Uh, in addition, he is, yet again, another boss that can be ripped apart with poison. You don't skip any of his phases, because he has no phase. But it still does tons of damage. Uh, what else? In the speedrun, Palmer at one point was the hardest boss in the game, which is hilarious to think because he's like a joke. But in the PC any percent run at one point, you got here so early that he was actually a huge problem and could completely destroy a run if you got unlucky. Uh, also, if you want a very big laugh, you can look up uh, what happens when you use uh, um, Pandora's box in this fight. Because it does some pretty hilarious stuff. I think, I think we have a video. Let me see. I think we did a video on it a long time ago. I'll have to find it. Uh, oh yeah, we found Palmer's final form. I'll post it in the chat. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, you can search We Found Palmer's Final Form. Yeah, I am planning on returning to the speedrun potentially in the future. For now, I'm focused on some other things, but... I do want to at least get New Game Plus back, because that's my favorite category. Uh. Thanks. Get the Eden Coat from this fight. Which is pretty good. Not as good in this version, though. Me, uh, yeah. For those of you that are, uh, that don't want to click off, I can show a, uh, probably show a. a, <laughs> a little snapshot of it. what happens when you use Pandora's box. <laughs> uh, Pandora's box has this really strange quality where it can show hidden models. And in a lot of fights, enemies have hidden models for like their multiple uh, targets, target spots. So it can like multiply the amount of models on screen. But for Palmer's fight, the truck is actually a model and it's hidden. So you can make it appear with Pandora's box. <laughs> and yeah, the plane is also an enemy too. No, it's gonna take off! Forget it, get in! that's funny is you can move on the plane while this is happening and if you hold run you move faster also look at this absolute Chad Yeet jump that Sid does like he just jumped like four times his height and you can run during this too Looks kind of goofy. The cloud's panicking. Uh, 
This is gonna be a big splash. Hold on to your drawers. <laughs> That's just him using his limit. I like that song a lot, by the way. Uh, and that's the only place it plays. Why does the plane start by itself? I have no idea. I, well, I think... I think the idea is... Uh, Palmer started the plane. And then we attacked him. And that's why during the fight, the plane, like, turns. And he has to dodge it. But it's weird that he starts it and then it does nothing for the whole time that we're fighting. Until we beat him. Hey, Blockbuster, how's it going? She won't fly anymore. Can't we use it as a boat? Do whatever you want. Sid, what are you going to do now? Don't know, I'm history with the Shinra and I've given up on the town. How about your wife? How about Shara? Wife, don't make me laugh. Just thinking about marrying her gives me the chills. What are you guys going to do? We're going after a man named Sephiroth. We'll have to get to Rufus of the Shinra someday, too. I don't know about any of that, but... What the heck? Sign me up. How about it, everyone? Whatever. Glad to be aboard, numbskulls. Numbskulls? Yeah, anyone stupid enough to go against Shinra nowadays has got to be a numbskull. I like it. So where are we headed? Rufus is going after Sephiroth towards the Temple of the Ancients. Really? Where is it? That Temple of the Ancients. Don't know. That numbskull kid was telling me he was heading the wrong direction. So maybe it's off this way. Let's just head for land and get some information. Temple of the Ancients. That name bothers me. Hmm. How about going west? No. No reason. No reason at all. I forgot about that. She actually hints at her, uh... Request. <laughs> about going west? No reason! And we are, like, right here. Alright, so I guess we'll decide when we're doing the Yuffie side quest next time. Um... I don't really have any reason to do it at any specific point. If we were gonna, if we could Materia Smuggle into it, then I'd want to do it later. But we can't Materia Smuggle on PS1. So, uh... Doesn't really matter to me when we do it. This is the earliest point you can do it, and the latest point you can do it is, uh... right before you fight Diamond Weapon. In fact, Diamond Weapon can even be on the map when you do it. Like, he can be standing there attacking Midgar and you can go do the, the quest. But that's the very last moment you can do it. So any time between then, any time between now and then, we can do it. Um, the only slight problem with doing it now is that it's actually pretty difficult. Uh, not for us, because we can cheese. but Well, not cheese, but we know what we're doing. <laughs> but normally it can be pretty difficult if you go do it now. Um, I can actually go to, uh, I think we can go to where you can get dragon scales now, which makes it infinitely easier. Or you can just go grab some right arms, and that makes it infinitely easier. Uh, but yeah, we'll decide that next week, I suppose. The one thing I did want to do before we quit, just because I was curious is whether or not you can give the mithril over now. I feel like you definitely can, but I might be remembering wrong. So we're gonna go try it. Yo ho, live stream! Thank you for the 535, man. Ah, okay, that makes sense.
Huh? Oh, another customer. You sure picked an out-of-the-way place, but... But if it's the Keystone you're looking for, you're too late. Don't have it. Keystone? What? You didn't come here for that? The Keystone is the key that unlocks the gate to a very old temple somewhere. You're not going to believe your ears. But I heard it was the Temple of the Ancients. Temple of the Ancients? Yeah, ha, ha. Why does he laugh like... Uh, Scarlet? Don't take it seriously. It's just a legend. So, he, yeah, he helps you figure out where the temple is and stuff. Oh, here you go. Yeah, you can do it. I would, uh... Yeah. So you can do it before or after, but it does have to be after you get the, the tiny Bronco. Okay, so there's a big box and a small box. The small box is up here. This gives you Aerith's ultimate limit. We're not going to use it, though. So we'll go ahead and do the big box. Which gives you a poopy gold armlet. Wink, wink. Talk about a lame trade-off. Like, not, it's not even good. I mean, I guess if you don't have three gold armlets, it's okay, but... Eden coat, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're not going to grind all of Aerith's Limits Breaks. We're not going to grind all of Aerith's Limit Breaks, so there's no reason to get the item. Not for this playthrough. Let's go to the Gem Ring, which is pretty good. Let's see, we can give you a bunch of materia for no reason, just to level it up. Uh, so Fury makes you, uh, e it makes it easier for you to miss with anything, including, including magic, uh, but makes your limit breaks fill up faster. So it's a pretty, it's an okay, it depends on the situation, uh, but it's not good enough to warrant literally always having it at all times. Uh, also, this is like my millionth playthrough, so I don't need to make sure I have Fury at all times. If I were super tryharding, I would actually have Sadness on the whole time, because Sadness is brutally broken in this game. Um, but we're not tryharding because we don't need to. But if I'm doing a challenge run or there's some reason why I need to try hard, then uh, I would have everyone with sadness. Sadness is kind of you're kind of tricked into thinking sadness is bad, but it's also but it's actually really good. Yeah, so did I. I always, I, in fact, I remember having furies on me or hypers on me at all times to make sure. I was like, oh man, I got sadness, that's so annoying. So I'd always make sure I had hypers so I could get rid of it. Because as a kid, you want to use your limit breaks. Like, it's the coolest part of the game, it's the limit breaks. You want to make sure you use them, so. No, sadness does not increase accuracy. Uh, all it does is make your limits fill slower, but gives you 30% damage reduction. But the reason it's so ridiculous is because 30% is a ton, and it's flat. It, it's 30% on everything, unless it's static damage. It's not like back row, where it helps you with like physical attacks. It's 30% flat damage reduction on everything in the whole game. So it's kind of accidentally way too strong. Um, so... But it does make you fill your limit bar slower, so if you're trying to learn limits, or you just want to use limits because they're fun, then sadness isn't great. But if you're doing a challenge run, or you're against a boss that's really difficult, that's dealing a lot of damage to you, like if you're fighting boss number early, uh, or the Midgar Zolum, uh, that's where sadness can be an absolute lifesaver. Uh, for example, Cloud Solo Necrosis was probably only possible because I went through like the entire game with Sadness. I would have taken 30% more damage the whole game had I not had Sadness. 
Uh, Air Tam is a static effect. It does exactly 1,111 damage times the amount of material you have. So that sadness doesn't affect it. Anything that's static damage still does static damage. But anything that does, you know, just an amount of damage based on defense and whatever will get uh, lowered by 30%. Uh, we actually talked about this earlier, Natural Disaster, but um, the uh, Mount Coral is really good for grinding limits because it has a lot of fights with a ton of enemies, and the enemies are also pretty weak. And then for the ones that, for like the limits that you need to build up your bar, um, really anywhere with dragons because they do a lot of damage, but um, there's probably a better maybe like Medeal, or just anywhere where like there's an enemy that does percentage damage. I'm trying to think if there is a good spot where an enemy does percentage damage. I'm not sure. But like Medeal Forest is usually pretty good because those enemies do a lot of damage. Uh, no, Lifestream. Like I said, it's static damage. It always does 1,111 damage times the amount of material you have, unless it misses. Uh, no, steel can't miss. It always hits, but it fails. Or succeeds. <laughs> Mug, however, I think you can miss, yeah. That's funny. That means that technically it's easier to miss with Mug than steel. Or, like, fail with Mug. You can fail Mug in that the Steel formula fails, or you can fail Mug because it misses, whereas Steel always hits, but it can fail. So if you're trying to steal something, it's actually better to use Steel. I actually hate Mug. I always try to make sure I don't level up my Steel materia because I don't like Mug. I always ended up killing the enemies on accident with Mug, and then it gets annoying. <laughs> like, Mug is, like, the worst ability in the game. Yeah, Medeal is a great place to do a lot of things. It's one of the best AP grinds in the game. It's one of the best XP grinds in the game. It's a good limit grinding area. That Medeal Forest I use for a lot of things. Yo, Eddie, thank you so much for the two months, man. Appreciate it, man. Uh, okay, I think that's it. I don't think there was anything else I wanted to do. I don't think there's anything with the Tiny Bronco I could show off. I honestly don't remember if the vehicle glitch works with the Tiny Bronco. I always do it with the sub because it's easier. I kind of want to try it just to see. I, I don't think it does. I'm really excited to show off the vehicle glitch once we get the sub because it's one of the funniest glitches you can do on the PS1 version. But I couldn't tell you if it works with the Tiny Bronco because I always do it with the sub. Which color sub am I going to get? I'm going to get the regular sub because I want Bahamut Zero. Uh, and I don't want to have to dig him up. Technically, you can get the red sub and you can get the stuff from the uh, from Fort Condor and still get Bahamut Zero because you can dig them up. But I don't prefer that because digging up Bahamut Zero is an absolute chore. Like, 1.5% chance chore. <laughs> it's terrible. Three point nine percent chance. I was close, but you also have to be in the right spot. If you're not in the right spot, you fail it. Right, let's see. I've never. I don't think I've ever tried this.
Doesn't seem like it's gonna work. Alright, this is why I never tried it, because it doesn't work. <laughs> this is why I always use the sub, because Time Rocket all work. So yeah, we'll have to wait. Wait till we get the sub. Show off the vehicle glitch. The vehicle glitch works by getting into two vehicles at the same time. Uh, but for some reason, can't seem to get in the tiny Bronco and the sub or the uh, buggy at the same time. There are two. The game knows which one you're getting in. And I don't think we can capture chocobos yet, right? I can't remember. When's the first time you can buy uh, stables? Is it now? Or is it this too? This too. That's what I was thinking. Because I know you can't, you can't do chocobo breeding until Tifa, I think. That's the first time you could, like, actually do all the breeding and go get the crazy materia if you want. Because I don't know if it would work, but potentially a chocobo and the tiny bronco could work. Or the chocobo and the buggy, but the buggy would be gone by then. Uh, but chocobo... chocobo sub works, that's what I usually use. Uh, Chocobo, Tiny Bronco might work. But anywho, I guess that is it for today. We definitely learned some amazing things about the game today and just had a really awesome time with this section of the game. This was an absolute treat. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being here and, and throwing in all their info and just experiencing the game with me. It's been an amazing, amazing experience, and I'm really excited to do more of it next week. But for now, that'll be it for the in-depth playthrough of Final Fantasy VII. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And now we have to say goodbye to YouTube. So YouTube, thanks again for being so amazing and being a part of this playthrough with us. And we'll see you in the next episodes, next time on Final Fantathon, our quest to casually let's play the whole Final Fantasy series. We'll see you there. Peace out.